Hey there garden friends, it's Heather at Fresh Coffee Farm and today we're making fermented plant juice. So I apologize because I made the intro to this video and realized that the sound was pretty much non-existent. Um, and since I've already made the product, <laughs> um, I can't do it again right now because I know I've used up all the, the weeds that I was gonna use. So I'm gonna give you a little background right now and then um, you can watch the process and I will put voiceover over it um, so it makes sense because you'll never hear anything that I'm saying. Technology. Anyway, fermented plant juice or FPJ um, is a shelf stable product that you can make yourself out of weeds in your garden. Um, now weeds mine the um, nutrients and minerals that are needed by your soil and your plants from lower in the soil. And so the weeds tell you something. Basically it's that, hey, you're lacking in this, we're gonna bring it up for you. And so the type of weeds that you have in your yard are indicative of the kinds of minerals that are, are lacking or are too low. So I suggest collecting something that is um, very ubiquitous in your garden to make this from. I am choosing uh, wild sweet pea, which is everywhere here. Um, this is my first year with it all over the place. <laughs> uh, so and other popular um, weeds to make fermented plant juice from. Dandelion is a super popular one. That one has loaded with nutrients and minerals. Uh, same thing with stinging nettle or blackberry leaves. So definitely investigate what you've got. You can use, if you're not sure what you have, uh, take a photo and then you can use a, an app like Plant Snap or Plant ID, or even if you use Google Photos, Google Lens will uh, ID it for you. So there's a lot of ways to figure out what you've got. And then you can just follow this so, process. Making fermented plant juice is a really easy process. I'm gonna walk you through it here in the next part of this video. And again, there's gonna be voiceover because the sound was completely annihilated. Now, this is my first time making this, and I am actually going to submit this finished product, the, the, the solution, the fermented plant juice. I'm gonna submit it to uh, a lab called Logan Labs, where they're going to do the analysis of the minerals and everything that end up in this plant juice. And um, the reason for that is that then I can enter that information into a database um, of other plant juices, <laughs> of other things, so that other people can see oh, if they make their own fermented plant juice out of sweet pea um, weeds, this is what they'll get. So if you're particularly looking for, I don't know, calcium or iron or, manganese, you can see which, which weeds have the most of that, and maybe you could make an FPJ out of that. Okay, so I think I'm actually gonna 
to use this. Hmm. I'm trying to decide. It's really a bit better to use the smaller mouth jars because you can, um, it's better to use something tall and thin because it's easier to seal off the surface. Okay, so I'm gonna stuff this in here. And it's not wet yet, but it will be. So it's completely coated in the sugar. Boy, any ants in here are gonna love that. I've seen Tony at Bear Mountain Farm do this with blackberry leaves, the growing tips of blackberry leaves, and he's brave because there's a lot of thorns in that. <laughs> my hands aren't that, uh, my hands are not willing to go through that, so <laughs> let's try this for now. All right, move this down, and then I'm gonna put what's left in here. It's making a mess. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is where's my spoon yeah i'm going to pack this down as much as i can i'm going to really try to eliminate as much air space in there as possible and then i'm going to put a sugar cap on it so basically that's just going to keep um kind of keep the air out seal it And it'll also act as an additional um, uh, additional moisture removal for the uh, for this product. Almost. So you want you want your weeds to be completely below the surface here. Yes, it's a lot of sugar. <laughs> Wish I could reach in here and really pat it down. Okay, so there you have it. So here is the completed product. You can see the um, sweet pea uh, tendrils and vines and stuff on the bottom that are already mixed with the brown sugar and you can see the brown sugar cap on top. And there is a, yes, that's a shot glass. <laughs> I used it to press down the top and make it a strong, solid cap on top. And also this just gives extra weight to um, help with the fermentation process. Now I got this recipe from this book, which I've already talked about once. This is Nigel Palmer's book, The Regenerative Grower's Guide to Garden Amendments. Yes. <laughs> uh, there are tons of recipes in here and all the information um, that you want to know about, um, you know, how to improve your soil and how to practice regenerative gardening. Also in the book are some wonderful uh, tables, like um, this is a sample from Dr. James Duke's Phytochemical and Ethnobotanical Database, which is free online. Um, and it will tell you everything you want to know about specific weeds that have already been tested um, and what kind of minerals they, uh, they have when you make these ferments. So if you're interested, you can check and see if um, the weed you've got is in the database and you'll see the types of things that you'll be able to bring to your garden by using it as a fermented plant juice. But I will post updates on Instagram. Um, I'm on Instagram at Bush Poppy Farm. Um, and I'll try to do some shorts as well because this takes about a week for it to completely ferment. Um, by tonight, I'll start seeing some liquid developing in the bottom. And um, over the course of the week, it will start to really pull all of the nutrients and minerals out of the plant material. And then I'll be ready to drain it off uh, into another jar where it will just be a liquid that I can use. Now, how do you use this liquid? I'm gonna use it, at, you can use it as a soil drench um, or as a foliar spray. And you know, it's not gonna make a whole ton. So you'll say, well, how's this gonna work? But we're talking about using it in a one to a thousand ratio. So it really goes a long way. And like I said, it's shelf stable. It just sticks around. So you'll, you'll have plenty on hand. So that's all for today about FPJ. Thank you so much for joining me. If you consider doing this in your garden, please let me know what you plan on using because I would love to hear about it. In the meantime, 
Have a wonderful time in your garden, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.